All right, guys. So this is another episode of the Jack the Kilo Show, and I have Buck Nero here with me. We ride on top of the Western Dow where he's about to perform today. Yeah, there. Yeah, and uh -huh. the the lines are around already around the corner there. And it's it's only ten thirty. Ten thirty. Yeah, it opens at ten. Do you always play here? This is our second time doing our monthly here. Okay. So we do the hood EDM event here and. The first time we did it was Halloween, and we just liked the vibes of everything, the, the hospitality of the venue, so we just, you know what I'm saying, we decided to keep doing the monthlies here, so. That's now awesome. here. Because so, you already got a crowd. Right, so. right, right. So that's good, like, you know what I mean? The fact that it's already wrapped around the corner, like, that means it just wasn't a one-hit wonder type thing. They really right. fucked with it, and it's cold. Exactly. You know I mean? so, yep. That should mean a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. So. You being you started here in Philly, right? Yep. When did you start? I started and a while music. ago, like I mean musically, I probably say like shit really started popping like four years ago. Um I hooked up with y'all little beats and we ended up making like a couple of songs. He executive produced my EP that I dropped on Steve Aoki label. He introduced me to Steve Aoki and then executive produced the EP and that kind of gave me like my running start, you feel me? And I was already doing the hood, like the hip hop, the EDM shit. So it just made sense, you know what I mean? So. Right. You are one of the most the most recognized rappers in the EDM. Right. Have you always worked with EDM or? I probably started like getting into electronic dance music like 2012, 2013. I went down to Ultra Festival in Miami and that shit just made me like, I realized the potential, you know what I mean? And like the connection with the people that the electronic dance music scene had. And I'm like, I could do that. You right. know? So that's how I got to it. You were, you were involved with a lot of different jams, right? Right. So what's your favorite that you've worked with? It depends. Like, I fuck with trap music heavy. Like, that shit always just got a vibe to it. If I'm in the mood, I could do house music. I do pop music. I got a couple of, like, pop songs that I got on Spotify. Like, Notice Me Senpai is a pop song. Uh, uh, Scoop Kid. It's a couple of things, you know what I mean? But I'm everywhere with it. And I guess it's because I can get bored so easy. I got to challenge myself or I'll just get complacent. And right. I don't care how successful I am. Like, the shit too easy. Like, I might hate myself because it's so easy. You know what I mean? So, would you say that, like, just changing it when the music you do... Um, I forgot the logo. What was the word that you just used? Complacent. No, before that, challenge. Challenge, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So, <laughs> so changing uh, every time you make music with some different genre, does that challenge you as an artist? Yep, it keeps me interested because at the end of the day, I'm trying to be the best at what I do and the genre that I do it in. So it's like, if I know like Taylor Swift got shit popping in this lane, like I'm trying to dominate that. Like I want you to hear my song like, yo, like, Pound for pound, this is better than hers. Or right. pound for pound, I would listen to this right after her song, or instead of her song, I would listen to this song. So, right. You know what I mean? I'm always trying to challenge myself and the person that's dominating that lane necessarily. I see you. Yeah. That's awesome. That's good. Um, so, you've been to a lot of different places, I guess. That's why you have that thing in you that you want to do a lot of different kind of music. Right, right, right. Tell me about like some of the places you've been around the world. So like my favorite place is like uh, Tokyo, Japan. That's my favorite place in the world. Like I remember seeing that shit on TV. And then when you get there, like it looked just how it looked in like the anime cartoons and like really? um, the movies and shit. Um, I like London. I like the UK, just the vibe, the, the history. Like you can see it like bleeding out of the buildings when you're walking down the street. Mm -hmm. um, I like uh, Dominican Republic, um, Netherlands, Amsterdam, Belgium was dope, uh, Colombia, Brazil. I love uh, uh, which one? Rio. Rio, Rio de yeah. Janeiro. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's dope. <laughs> like I've been everywhere. Like I've been in the favelas, and then when I travel places like. I go to like the culture, like I want to go like to the hood because that's what I identify with. Like, right. I feel comfortable in them places because nine times out of ten, the people look like me. Right. So, and I don't do you, follow places. 
do you like collaborate with artists from those places every time you're traveling? I try to, mm -hmm. if I got time. Like I got songs with my homie Slee. Shouts out to Slee. He in uh, Tokyo. Okay. Producer, vicious. I got I got songs with my homie in um, Rio. Uh, yeah. Ari, she's dope. Um, Netherlands. I got songs with like Yellow Claw um, from the UK. Zomboy. So it's like. I try to leave roots in everywhere I go and then like take a little bit of inspiration from them places and then bring it back to Philly. So what would you say that makes you more creative or makes you creative the most? It's the lack of uh resources. Cause it's like it starts from like just growing up in poverty and like understanding that if you don't make a way for yourself then you know what I'm saying the, the way not gonna get made. So right. like you, t you take the, the limited resources that you got and you create lanes and opportunities for yourself. Like, not necessarily saying it gotta be illegal, but uh, you know, you just gotta have that hustle. So mm -hmm. now once, with that instilled in you, you take that and, and, and put that in the other areas in your life. You know what I mean? That's what I did. So, right. like, I, I got the same mindset that I had when I was a kid. Like, right now, like, I don't care how successful I get, I'm always had this hustle mentality because that's what's in me. You know? Right. And it's good that you just apply it for to your dreams, right? right? right exactly. To go and chase your dreams. Exactly. That's awesome. So, what's your dreams for 2020? My dream from 2020 is I want to tour in Europe. Um, I want to be over there heavy. Uh, I want to tour in China. Like I want to be over there heavy, and when I'm in Philly, see my family relax with everybody but for the most part i just want to like do the monthlies and just be around my family and do certain shit like i know this year i did like a lot of like dope shit uh in my personal life that meant a lot to me you know what i mean like i love battle rap mm -hmm. i got to take my brother to a battle rap event my older brother that you know raised me um i got my niece her passport i bought my nephew a couple of like video games that i know he really liked just just personal shit that mean a lot to me and i know it was vital to them, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that I feel like that shit, I did a lot of dope shit this year, but that shit is going to stick, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the shit that I'm going to look back on. So I guess family yeah. is a big part of your career. Yeah, family is a big part of my career because, like, when I first started, I made a lot of sacrifices. I still do to this day, but I made a lot of sacrifices, and I miss birthday parties, um, family events, because I'll be at the studio where, like, you know what I mean? Just putting them 10,000 hours of, like, you know, internship in with fucking, you know what I mean, just situations. So I'm glad I was able to like still hustle to the highest degree in my, um, you know, music and everything else that comes along with the creative aspect and still like be good with my family, you know what I mean, my girl and all that shit. I keep that up, yeah. That's awesome. So what should we look forward to, Buck Nero, for the next year? Just a lot of good music for me. Um, I'm gonna definitely push the creative boundaries, like visually and um, you know, vocally on the music. Um, there's gonna be good energy behind it. You know what I mean? It's gonna be good serenaded like music. So many people out there. I know. The line not even right there, but that's the word. But I feel um, like we're in Pine Square. Yeah, right. right? The end. About hopping out. <laughs> but yeah, it's about the energy, man. Like, it's been times where I'm, I'm in the studio with my homies and like. We might just be vibing, dancing to the track, putting good spirits into the music before we even record. So that's so, that's what I'm about, like 2019. Yeah. That's going to go further than just like something that sounds good. You know what I mean? They got to feel good first. So that's 2020. That's what it's about. That's awesome. I'm yeah. so glad that I had I got you to have this conversation with you right, finally. Right. That's love. Thank you so that's much love. for taking some of your night because I know it's going to be pretty busy. Yeah. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> so tell us where to find you and thank you again. You can find me on Spotify, Bach Nero, Instagram, Bach Nero, B O K N E R O. Any platform, just B O K N E R O. Anywhere in the world. Yeah, that. <laughs> awesome. That thank you so that much. Was dope. That was dope. <laughs>